Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Lion Plays XCOM Enemy Within. Uh, last mission didn't go that well. We lived, and we fought Thin Man for the first time, and we lost two units, which is not necessarily the end of the world, but uh, learned some valuable tips. People gave me some really good feedback, like, uh, well, first off, I cringed when I saw you move the sniper accidentally. Yep, me too. <laughs> That's a fair assessment. That's an appropriate reaction. Um, also, instead of moving down that central corridor of death so we could possibly have to deal with enemies on two sides, much better to just crawl around one side of the building. Uh, definitely makes sense. Also some good feedback for research and um, uh, possible builds to go for in the future. Let me just look at engineering quickly. Um, not facilities, but items. The scope is built. Med kit is available. Um, another tip that was very useful, people to- oh, you guys have promotions ready? You do, right, okay, I remember, this is where we were. Um, I don't- Oh, this is our sergeant. So, um, I was told that for supports, there's no consensus, like, best way to build a support. The thing that you should do is just make sure that you're not building supports in exactly the same way. Like, for example, you don't need necessarily two supports with, you know, three medkits each or two supports with three smoke grenades each. Um, so, I think we'll, um, we'll start with maybe covering fire on our, on our uh, sergeants, and then after that we'll make this uh, soldier the uh, the medkit focus uh, support. And then we have our other support that is also leveled up, and she can be our smoke grenade support. So we'll give her covering fire, just so she can kind of fill in the gaps from the other one. And then the, the tip that uh, I was given is make all of your supports, all of like every class the same color so you don't confuse them. I think this is great feedback, actually. So, um, this looks like a, a medical setup to me. I think supports should be, like, pink or red. Yeah, like, crimson like that, just so I can see them out there. Um, and I'll be, like, able to recognize instantly, hey, that's, you know, the person's in red, they're a, uh, they're a medic. I mean, red plus, like, yellow accents might not be that camo focus, but that's okay. So you're gonna be in red and yellow, and you are also going to be... In red and yellow. It's not loadout, that's customized. Um, that is armor tint 17? 18. Okay, good to know for the future. Alright, all supports. Um, Corporal Emma Turner. As a heavy. Bullet Swarm, I think, is awesome. To allow us to shoot twice, but it goes through our ammo, our ammo, sorry, super quickly. But I still feel like that's probably what we want to do here, even though hollow targeting is not, um, not a bad choice. But I think for just, like, sheer damage output, maybe on this heavy we'll go, like, bullet swarm, so we can get double shots. And then, um, uh, heat ammo, so we can do double damage to robotic enemies and really make this, like, a huge DPS, uh, upgrade for us here. Okay, um... Let's go back, scan for activity, and see what's coming up next. Probably an alien uh, abductions mission. Oh no, we have our first um, our first uh, UFO defense. The volume might have changed. Kate actually got me new headphones for my birthday this weekend, so uh, it, it has adjusted the volume settings. I think that the volume is actually a little lower now, which for my own personal taste is better, but uh, let me know how you feel about it here. Usually, I think you're guaranteed to win the first mission, or the first... Uh, Dogfight here. But they do, they ramp up the tension. We only have to hit twice, yeah. And we got very little uh, damage to our own interceptor, which is probably good. So let's send a Sky Ranger out here. Uh, I don't know if we should send two supports. Let's send one support and three rookies. Okay, that's fine. And I think our, our rookies, honestly, should probably just go out with... Uh, can't see their like their aim easily. Sorry, not yeah, their their aim and their will easily. Whatever. We'll send out uh rookie Aguda here. Yeah, I think it's better to not give them scopes and give them grenades instead so they can destroy cover and just help us get out of this mission and hopefully get some more squaddies. Uh we should probably build an officer training school as well when we get the chance. But for now, let's just focus on handling the tactical side of this mission. You'll be heading into Japan for the next mission. We'll be heading into Japan for the next mission. The country in which we have our location, or we have our uh, base. All right, let's 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 be smarter on this mission. I'm still reeling a little bit from the last one. Um, we want to move out in such a way that it's very unlikely for us to be flanked uh, on two sides simultaneously. So I feel like probably our best uh, advice is to move over 
all the way to the right first and then kind of comb in like a hook shaped pattern if that makes sense it may not make sense that's fine I'm on the move. my thinking is basically get exactly to the right edge of the map and then move forward in like a, what looks like an umbrella handle so that we kind of go up to the top and then curve to the left and cover that side of the map as well so um we're gonna be dashing not into the unknown but far enough to give us uh, an extra chance at uh safety here and uh you know maybe cover things a little bit faster this is our mission with the outsider the first time we, we encounter an outsider i think because we've encountered ah oh, there's fucking melt over there i think because we encountered a thin man well the several thin men if we're being honest here um we have the potential uh to find thin men in the ufo as well which obvious obviously i'd prefer not to if we could avoid it Just keep our vision up here. For now, I don't really care about the meld as much as I care about surviving this mission. Even though I know that maybe that's a fallacy. Part of the fun of XCOM, but it's also, you know, part of what makes it such a, a difficult game to learn. At least for me. Is, um... You know, you have so many different resources that are all worth different amounts relative to one another at different points in the game like that's what makes it so engaging i think is this um you know is melth word melth <laughs> is melth is meld <clears throat> worth a rookie's life is meld worth uh, a squatty's life you know um there's uh there's so many things to consider it's it's a very dynamic kind of i mean i don't i feel weird calling it a resource management game but it really is like a resource management and, and turn-based strategy game. And uh, as much as this may surprise you, I think that my tactical side of things is not the weak point in my game for the most part. I really feel like like that stuff I can learn relatively easily with some guidance. It's the... Um, it's learning stuff like, you know, when is one resource more important than another one that's going to make a big difference. Especially when it comes to stuff like base building and research. Um, but for now, so far so good. Do, I don't really care if we're doing these missions super slowly. Doesn't bother me at all. Just making sure we're crawling out here. Good to go. People have also told me that, again, the most important thing is full cover. Half cover, the general rule, even though I just moved to half cover. People said half cover on classic is no cover. It means the aliens... Uh, and it was actually really helpful to get the, the math for this, but, well, the, the formula, I guess. Um, people said that in half cover, without hunkering down, the aliens have a 55% chance to hit you, whereas you only have a 45% chance to hit them. So that really puts it into perspective. You're like, why would you ever go into cover in a situation where you're rolling the dice, you know? By going into that cover, the aliens have a better chance to hit you than vice versa. Okay, so we lost our first meld canister. Yes, Commander. But I don't feel too badly about it. We got some good full cover here. We should start uh, naming our units soon too as well, but I didn't want to name for the first couple of missions just because, uh, well, obvious reasons, I'm assuming. I know that I'm still moving into half cover while I'm saying never move into half cover, but I like like a half cover hunker. It's like a boot scoot and boogie, right? Like we're... We're relatively safe doing this. I also need to... Somebody linked me to a guide of, like, a comprehensive guide to XCOM flanking angles. Because people are getting aggravated, and probably deservedly so, that I'm, um... I'm failing flanks and letting enemies flank me too easily. Uh, just due to a, a misunderstanding of how those angles work. I really would prefer not to, uh... Aggro... These aliens on the next turn... On this turn, I should say. Alright. If you're in full cover, you're on Overwatch. Everybody else. Hunker. Hunker. And maybe maybe you can do an Overwatch because you are going to have a little bit of a height bonus. So your odds of hitting are maybe a little, little higher. Okay, so there's aliens over there. Ideally, I'd like to get the meld. Maybe we can move forward, trigger a pod, and then set an Overwatch trap. Uh, but it appears like it won't... If that's going to happen, it's not going to happen right now. Hmm. I mean, we don't have a sniper. Copy that. Copy that. We don't have a sniper, so I don't really... Uh, 
need to keep this guy here. We'll just move forward slowly. So far, so good. I mean, it's only so far so good because we haven't encountered anything, but still. In a way, it'll almost be a relief if I lose this meld canister, which I know probably is not what people want to hear. <laughs> but it would be a little bit of a relief just so that I, I could only focus on survival. Man, we still can't see this meld canister. Heading there now. We still, still can't see this meld canister. Well, we know for sure that there are going to be aliens around here. So I'm thinking now is about the time we probably like reorient our camera to face this way. Uh, and then we, we try to get all of our units behind good full cover. Which is not like extremely common here. Maybe like can have you post up here. That doesn't seem good. Just go on the overwatch for now. I don't think a pod will pop right now. Oh, we're getting close, though. Okay. Well, there's full cover at this tree. Man, no one can get there without running. It's extremely disappointing. Let's take a, a blue move first. Quickly move it into a yellow. Didn't pop the pod. That's great news. I, st I don't want vision of the aliens yet. Just keep everybody bunched up, but not so bunched up that a single grenade could kill them. Uh, I'm noticing now, is my one rookie one square away from the tree? Oh my god, he is. <laughs> oh, this would be the absolute worst time for aliens to show up. Oh my god, there they are. As if on cue. This is, uh, this is a problem. I didn't expect them to come from the UFO. I actually thought they would come from the other side. Well, if they fall back enough, we might have a, ch a turn to get ourselves behind full cover. The problem is we don't know if there's overwatches. So let's do the smart thing. You obviously have to get behind full cover. You probably will never have a shot, but you gotta be behind the cover anyway. Um, other full cover, that's logical. That. Right here. You're, I think you're probably best off taking this angle over here and then hunkering. And now this, this unit is pretty important for us. So I feel like maybe we just have her move back here and hunker for now. <gasps> oh my God, it's a smoke grenade. Oh, if there's one complaint I have about the X... This is not a terrible move, I think. But if there's one complaint I have about XCOM UI, it's that the same things are different buttons for each character. I would love it so much more if the smoke grenade just became, like, nine for every support instead of trying to fit it into the middle somewhere. So, I mean, that, it's my own fault. Don't get me wrong. But at the same time, I'm like... Come on. Okay. Well, they're never going to come out. So we should take, uh, we're going to have to take the initiative ourselves to some extent. I don't really want to move out from behind the full cover. But maybe we can take the half cover and then hunker and have a shot next turn. I'm on the move. Oh, wow, she has a flanking shot. That alien didn't get behind cover. 76% is a no-brainer try, at least. Nice. Um... I know half cover is no cover, but these aliens won't have a shot anyway. So I feel like if I can bait them out here, this might be fine. We'll take an overwatch uh, to protect the units that are hunkering down, which is a lot of them right now. So the first sectoid is dead. What was that sound? Ooh, that sound. Can't you sound that sound? Um, I know that we should probably prioritize taking out the remaining sectoid aye, aye, Commander. for this exact reason oh she got tagged that's okay uh i i wanted to move to get some extra vision i didn't want to get the outsider but now that you know what's done is done 
probably in her best in interest to hunker. But I'm thinking what might be a nice try here, even if it does put our rookie uh, like in a bit of a desperate situation, is come down to this half cover right here. Oh, that was the worst time for there to be another pod. Especially because they're flanking in the other direction. <sighs> okay, because my thinking is, throw a grenade right here. Does three damage, blows up the cover. We can't hit these aliens yet. But we could probably kill the outsider. Which seems like, a, it's aggressive, you know, maybe the best uh, defense is a good offense. We have to make sure we don't miss with our remaining shot. It also destroys the cover for the other alien. 66% chance to hit. We gotta take the shot. Oh, beautiful. Okay. So, I mean, it, it still might not be the right decision, so to speak, but at least, um... At least we, uh... We accomplished our objective, I guess. So this unit is not gonna be the primary target for a shot. So I'm gonna put them in Overwatch. Our rookie down here might be screwed. I imagine a mind meld probably comes first. Um, and then we have three sectoids left. And honestly, these three sectoids may be the last ones. That is probably just very lucky for us that we didn't get hit there. They have like basically a coin flip every time, right? Oh, the Overwatch would be so good here if it actually works. I think our heart was in the right place. We got pretty unlucky to trigger that pod, but I'm pretty sure we're in the market for a rookie's eulogy right here. She lived. Okay, uh, obviously <laughs> something has to be done on this turn. Uh, I think that probably, well, we have a couple of options. There's no overwatches, right? There, there were a couple of shots taken. So I'm actually thinking that maybe our best option for safety is take our rookie back, have her get medkitted. Oh, you don't have a shot on the other unit. Um, Hmm. If you move here, you won't have a shot. If you move here, you're not behind cover. If you move here, you won't have a shot. Okay. I'm going to move you up to this half cover up here to put you in a bit of a more offensive position. And it sucks. <laughs> okay. That's not good. Um, well, okay. Another thing that we could do is move this unit up a little bit and then throw a grenade. But it's probably not going to work out that well. But if your only shot is at this unit, if we wanted to kill the mind melded unit, we'd have to take a move over here, which I just now realize is makes us very suspect to that one in the middle. But we still have a shot at the one in the ship anyway. Oh, that miss is catastrophic. Okay, um, I think for safety's sake, we play a little bit more defensively. You come back, and um, then you use your med kit on this unit. Now, she could still die in one hit, but... At least now, she may not. And somehow I find myself in this terrible situation where all of my units are behind half cover. <laughs> this isn't how it was supposed to be. Thank God she didn't die immediately after I spent the medkit on her. Not that the medkit matters, but the turn spent to do it matters. This could be dangerous. I basically sacrificed this unit's life for the other unit's life. Okay, and now she's gonna panic. At least she didn't panic and shoot the person who just healed her. I would have been very displeased. Well, I really want to take the, uh, the 76% chance. But I need to make sure that we're protected from our other side. So I'm gonna put you on an overwatch here. Man, we're totally gonna get flanked if I take this shot. Leave my other rookie to fend for herself, unfortunately. Just to play a little bit more defensively, is my thinking. We should have been more aggressive at trying to take out that mind melded unit. I think I made that mistake. Oh, no. I think I made my mistake earlier by trying to, um... Trying to push for the outsider instead of just taking the easier hits. She's lived, which is incredible to me. Uh, now she has to come back again. And we're gonna give the uh, we're gonna give her another med kit, honestly. Keep her alive. Hey, quiet, you big baby. You're fine. quiet, you big baby. You're fine. Well, we have different definitions, but that's okay. Okay. Um, 
that might have seemed like a bit of a capitulation. But we're actually okay. We lost one unit. I don't want to say, you know, vague platitudes like life goes on, but we are still alive and, and relatively well. 56% chance to hit. Anything that's a coin flip or better, I'm going to take. She got a hit, but not a kill. Hmm. I think we take our 45% chance as well. Beautiful. I wish that that had worked the first time, but that's okay. You just go on Overwatch to protect these units. So I think we have two sectoids left. They're pressing forward, which is actually awesome for me. Oh, and we got a mine... No, not a mine melt. A cry for help. That's all right. Our support is still alive. Take your coin flip chance, basically. This time we've missed. Probably should have gone for a hunker and tried to bait them out a little bit more. You're going to medkit yourself this time. Probably don't stand up on that pedestal to do it, is my thinking. But, you know, that's just me personally. And then... Simon. I, I mean, I really wish you had vision. Because this is the problem right now. You got no... You got no vision. What if I put you here? It's not like these units have grenades. Anytime they take a move, I'm happy with this for now. Give us a turn to regroup. Okay, so we got full cover. Everyone doing okay, roughly? Probably reload. Hunker. Overwatch. Okay. I mean, I'll admit, probably we should not have lost a rookie on this mission. I should have played more defensively from the start, but... Uh, we are, we're in the position we're in, and I think we've done okay. That was a great shot. I wouldn't have expected that to work on Overwatch. Okay, the unit that has been shot a hundred times is going to come out here. Try to gain some vision on the last sectoid. 65% chance to hit. He is immortal. We should, as much as I hate to say it, I think we should probably send our support and try to take the 76% chance for the shot. Thank God. <laughs> I was scared of this, but uh, I think it ended up being the right decision. Uh, but I was scared because if she missed, who knows what happens. But hey, good, 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 good. We've leveled up. We got our eighth support, so that's that's lovely. Um, oh, we never mind. We also got our ninth support. It's not eight and nine, actually, but you know what I mean. Got some urban combat badges. New research available beam weapons. That's, of course, good. Situation room. Visit the gray market. Sell your damaged materials. That's awesome. We should probably build a satellite uplink facility. First, we're going to need a power generator. So if we're planning, we would probably try to get power generators like here. So maybe we should build an officer training school first. Or maybe we should stockpile satellites. There's a couple of different options here. Hmm. You know what? Maybe that's the, the question that I'll leave you guys with here. What would you prioritize in this situation? We got 126 credits. Um, we could build, we could excavate and build power facilities, or we could um, build an officer training school, or we could build an extra satellite. In fact, I think I'll probably ask Twitter right now, but I'm interested to know what you guys think in the comments as well. Uh, first, we should also view our soldiers. Did he say we haven't found shootable replacements yet? Because I'm not sure I'm comfortable with that. Armor deco, we're looking for... Oh, like this one, and then 18. That's facial hair. That Facial hair 19 is pretty dope, though. Armor tint 18, so I remember you are a support. Okay. Uh, I'll leave that. I'll leave you guys with that question for now. Thanks for watching, and thanks so much for your support. I appreciate it a great deal. And of course, if you enjoyed the episode, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. And subscribe if you want to see more in the future. I'll be back tomorrow with more XCOM. Thanks for watching, and I will see you then.